This is just a really brief tutorial to talk about how to make connections in Maya and thereby build up a complex network of things. So we can just deal with a simple object like this and building a shading network. So I've just got an AI standard surface material applied to it. You can see it rendered here. Um, and to make changes to something like this, you act on a node. So a node would be any one of these things these little boxes that you see in the uh, hypershade. And then the attributes are these defining attributes. Some have many, like this. Some have far fewer, like this shading group. But the way that Maya builds complexity and the way that you as a user can build complexity in Maya is by making connections between nodes in new and interesting ways. Um, so. Really, I just want to talk about how to make these connections uh, to get you started without really talking about types of connections you should make, more technical rather than creative here. So first things first, if I want to assign this shader to this object, it's already assigned, but if I wanted to, I can just middle mouse drag from the shader onto the object. I can select the object in the viewport, right click on the shader and say assign material to viewport selection. Or finally I could right click on the object and go down to assign existing material and choose that one or assign new material or assign a favorite material if I happen to have one. All this to say there are many ways to achieve the same thing in Maya and you'll find that throughout your time using Maya that there are always many ways to achieve the same thing. So let's change some of the attributes in the hypershade here. So we can change the color of something just by changing the color in the color field or you can change a value by just typing in a new value. You can make this rougher so we don't really see the specular highlight. You can also map other nodes to these attributes, and that's what I want to talk about here. So, for example, let's say we want to map a fractal to the weight of the base color. So the base color will be this blue. The weight will be how much of it's returned to the viewer after the incidental light bounces off of it. So if I, right now it's at 0 0.8, so 80% of that color is showing through. I can turn that up to one, we'll get a, a purer representation of that color under full white light. But I can also map something to this, so I can click on the checkerboard here, go to something like 2D textures and choose a fractal. And Let's change that. So if I go into six mode in my uh, viewport, then we'll see the representation of whatever textures we have set up in here. So right now, um, this fractal, as we can see here, has been linked to what's called base here. And this is one of the slightly confusing things about making connections in the hypershade is that here in the uh, attribute editor, we've got base weight, but here that's just called base. And then we've got base color, it's called base color here. So it can sometimes be a little difficult to find things. Uh, I have to say it's better than it used to be, So, uh, but you'll get used to that. So we can still make changes to the color and that fractal is still influencing the weight of the expression of that color on the surface. Okay, so it's not much to that. But how did we make that connection? We clicked on the checkerboard, we got the visor open and we could um, make that connection ourselves that way. We can also do that here in the hypershade. So let's say I want to reconnect that out alpha of the fractal. I can just click on the green dot here and hook it up to the base. And we should get back to the same state that we were before. Now when you're working in the hypershade, you might not see your nodes looking like this. This button of three bars will 
minimize or expand your node. So click it once, see the connections, click it again, then you'll see more. Same thing here. If you click it a fourth time, that's when you see everything. So you can make connections like that. I can also make a connection by grabbing the out alpha here with the middle mouse button and just dragging it onto the name of the attribute in the attribute editor. And the reason that sometimes you have to do this is if you can't actually find that attribute listed in this node for some reason. But that's always a way you can work. One thing to be aware of though is that some types of attributes can't be connected to other types of attributes. And that has to do with how many channels that attribute has. So for example, out alpha is just a range of white to black. Um, it's a single channel attribute. It's just got one range. Whereas out color uh, is a triple channel attribute because it's got R, G, and B values. So for example, if I take out alpha and I try to connect it to base color, it's not going to let me. If I hold my mouse over it for a minute, it'll open up and show me its sub-channels. And then I can connect it because base color R is now a single channel attribute. And I can connect the same attribute to many different things if I wanted to. So if I wanted out alpha to go into base color, I'd have to connect it to each of its sub-attributes. Same goes for trying to connect something like out color to base. It's going to gray out and not allow you to connect it because out color has three channels and base only has one. So if you want to try and force one of the subchannels of color to attach to this here, you can always go up to this dot here, whether it's white or orange or whatever. You can click on this and then you can choose out color and it will show you the sub channel. So out color R. Now I can hook that to base because those are single channels. Now sometimes it will show us the sub channels here, but it doesn't seem to want to right now. Um, but anyway, that's how you can make connections. You just have to make sure the uh, the channels you connect or the attributes you're connecting have similar attribute qualities. The other thing you can do is start to make more complex complex networks by linking one node into another. So for example, if I take another 2D texture node, say a noise node, I'm just using the basic Maya textures here. I could take the out alpha of this noise and pipe it into, let's say, the alpha gain of the fractal. So in the fractal, alpha gain is just an expression of its luminosity, really. It could be transparency, but in this case, it's just the amount of white that's expressed. So at one, it's a multiplier. So whatever values we set here, gain means multiply. So if we multiply by one, we're just going to get a true representation of this. If we go down to zero, it just goes to black because we're multiplying everything by black. So I could take the out alpha of this noise and connect it to the alpha gain here. And we'll get this noise breaking up this fractal. So we should be able to see that if we start increasing or decreasing the ratio. So yeah, you can see how it's the fractal is still there, but it's being broken up by this uh, noise pattern. And you could even continue to chain these things. I could, let's say, take um, a simplex noise and take its out alpha and put it into the alpha gain of the noise. And we'll continue to break this up. And the reason for doing something like this is usually so your textures don't look so CG. They have more variability in them when you link textures like that by chaining them. It doesn't always have to be through the alpha gain. There are plenty of utility nodes in Maya either the basic ones uh, that come bundled with Maya that allow you to mix 
different uh, textures. Uh, for example, uh, let's see, there's blend colors. So you can put one color in here, one color in there, and blend them. But it doesn't have to be colors, it could be textures. So I can drag the simplex texture here, the noise texture here, and then this blend colors, you know, I can put into the emission weight or something. Uh, well, it's emission weight is a single channel thing, and the output of this is a triple channel thing. So I'd have to open this up and say connect output R to emission. Then that will start happening. There are things like multiply and divide. So you can mix things that way. You can, there's all sorts of things. I'm not going to go into all of them now. And in Arnold, there are even more and even more complex ones that you can start to mix things up with. So anyway, you just have to realize that you can make connections between attributes, but they have to be the right types of attributes to connect to each other. And once you've identified the right types, uh, there are plenty of ways to connect them. And then once you know that, then you can start to build interesting and innovative uh, shader networks. Thanks.